The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Like many people in life, Monty has two main ambitions. To get rich quick and to become a hero. The idea is to help Monty reach the beautiful damsel in distress, crossing pits of slime and dodging innumerable aliens, sour lemons and other hostile objects, all the while scooping up piles of gold. Each screen has one exit to the next level, the catch being that all of the gold has to be collected first before you can be allowed to leave each screen. A less than easy task which requires some nifty joystick handling. The screens are broken up into various boxed areas with gold nuggets placed, naturally, in the most difficult positions to get at. The enemy type aliens parade up and down left and right, which makes timing your progress an essential ingredient. I suppose one of the unique elements to the game is that the controls have variable momentum and, since you cannot jump, you must evade the enemies using your joystick paced movement. The longer you keep the joystick pressed in any direction, the faster Monty will travel, which is a nice feature other than the fact that he simply won't stand still once you've begun movement and will only stop once you have reached a wall or barrier, which makes for some tricky manoeuvrability. Paired with the fact that many of the gold nuggets are positioned so that getting to them requires not only good timing but very fast movement. This only adds to both the difficulty and offers a very playable challenge. Sure, once Manic Miner kicked off the craze, it was difficult to sort the wheat from the chaff in most people's eyes, but I love them all. No matter how flimsy or graphically inept they may be, they all hold a massive amount of charm for me. Within them, for me at any rate, lies the pure crystallisation of what makes retro games still so attractive. Not the most graceful of his brethren, Mutant Monty may not have the credentials of a certain minor willy, but I had a blast in his company. Of course, the majority of these levels are fiendishly set out, and there is often only one sure way to reach the goal, which must be performed with pixel-perfect precision, or else, well, you're screwed. Each room has its own name displayed at the bottom, just above your lives, of which there are initially five, and your score. This is another element of these games that the scrolling platformer killed off. It always felt like each room had hidden meaning to the creator and was given enough attention to warrant a name. And of course, the rooms are rife with mental enemies, such as little green snot monsters, which must be avoided at all cost. Overall, it may be typical. It may not be the prettiest game around, but it's a sure fire winner in my eyes and that's why I definitely recommend you give this game a whirl. Thanks for watching guys, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and let me know if you've played this game before in the comment section. Did you love it? Did it frustrate you to death? I want to hear about it. Also, if you're enjoying the nostalgia then please do consider subscribing to the channel to follow me on this epic journey, revisiting classic Commodore games just like this with plenty more on the channel playlist and more posted daily Monday to Friday. I'm sure there will be at least some games that definitely bring back some awesome nostalgic memories. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching and until the next one, bye for now. Thank you.